Marshall Space Flight Center was named after George C. Marshall, who had been uh, during World War II the Army Chief, uh, Chief of Staff. Uh, and afterwards, he had a career as the Secretary of State, for which uh, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He was the first ever formerly active military personnel to ever win the Peace Prize. So he was also a very close friend of Eisenhower, who dedicated the center. Uh, George Marshall passed away in 1959. The center was created in 1960. Eisenhower was still president at that time, so he thought that'd be a good idea. A lot of the work for Marshall had already been underway from 1950 to 1960. The Army Group here under Von Braun and the German rocket team, uh, they'd done a lot of great things with the Redstone rocket, with the Juno rocket, with the Jupiter C. They launched America's first Explorer One, America's first satellite in space. Uh, and they had been responsible for the development of the vehicle that would launch Alan Shepard. Now that happened in May of 1961, but that work had been underway uh, under the Army's regime. When the Army team was established here, they needed a test stand. They needed a full launch vehicle test stand that could be uh, capable of static testing that vehicle. And that's what the Redstone test stand was. It was a quick program. It was built uh, as an intermediate step for the big stand that they were gonna get, uh, the, the T stand that's actually out there now. And if you come on a tour out here, you kind of get a sense of how quick things were because the test stand looks a little cobbled together. And it was, it was by design. Uh, it was you know, built with uh, metal from around the, around the center. Uh, those bunkers that you'll see that where the people would actually watch the test, it's just basically three rail cars that were cleaned out, buried, instrumented, and, and fitted to, you know, to watch that test. So it's, uh, it's, it's improvisation at its best. Uh, in 1960, when Marshall is created, uh, very quickly thereafter, we get President Kennedy decides that we're gonna go to the moon. We're gonna need larger stands. The S1C stand, which is by far the most uh, iconic stand out here, that was gonna test the first stage of that Saturn V launch vehicle, a stage capable of generating 7.5 million pounds of thrust. I mean, that's the stand that you know, people would have heard in their homes in Huntsville. Uh, it would have shaken the windows, you know, just rattled the windows. And, and, and that sound really signified the economic growth that was continuing with the space program. Well, Marshall isn't just a propulsion center. It is the propulsion center, but we do so much more than that. We have a diversity of programs. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, really trying to understand the universe in, in all of its spectrum, the X-rays, gamma rays, everything. Uh, we developed the Hubble Space Telescope. That was, we oversaw the development of that. Uh, the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which just celebrated its 20th year in orbit. Uh, you know, we oversaw that and still continue to this day to oversee that program. You know, Skylab was a Marshall program as well. We oversaw that, learning to live and work in space. Space Lab, as part of the Space Shuttle program. You've got this shuttle, you've got this huge payload bay, let's do something scientific with it. And we did, learned a ton about the microgravity environment of low Earth orbit and what it's and, and the role it has in things like manufacturing and also in understanding new vaccines, new you know fighting disease. Uh, it's just so important to that. Today on the International Space Station, for 20 years almost, we've had human beings living above our heads continually for two decades. And again, something people take for granted. But one of the most important things that goes on there is the scientific research. That. That facility was built as a scientific research tool. And every day, great cutting edge science happens on the space station. And Marshall manages all of those payloads. It works with the uh, scientific, it works with the, with the investigators, it works to understand that science, it schedules that science, and it develops the hardware uh, apparatus for that science to be done on orbit. We manage it from our payload operation integration center 24 hours a day. So above your heads, 24 hours a day, great science has taken place, and it's all managed from Marshall Space Flight Center. You know, people assume that the space program is kind of occurs in a vacuum and that it's all for space program. But if you think about the, you know, the benefits that we have from Apollo today, you know, microprocessors, computers that, computing power that before Apollo was just not even imagined. It was science fiction. Today it's just a part of our regular lives. There's a direct link really between the cell phone in your pocket and the work that was done for the space program. One of the things about this region is you can really take pride in, you know, in that history. It, you know, this area has done something incredibly important that not many places on the earth can point to that they contributed. And they, they continue to contribute today.